Let's talk briefly about the general reactivity of carbonyl groups, and here we're going to focus on just the neutral carbonyl group. We'll save the protonated carbonyl group and the enolate for later discussions. So we're going to focus again just on this neutral carbonyl group, and in particular the reactivity of the CO double bond, the actual carbonyl group itself. There are two important things to keep in mind as far as the general reactivity of a neutral carbonyl group. The first is that the oxygen of the CO double bond is nucleophilic and basic. And the second is that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic. So we have a Lewis base at the oxygen, primarily as a result of these two non-bonding lone pairs at the oxygen, and we have a Lewis acid at the carbonyl carbon as a result of its relatively low electronegativity and the fact that the CO pi bond is polarized toward oxygen. The carbonyl oxygen is not that strong of a base because oxygen is quite electronegative, and so the electrophilic behavior of the carbonyl carbon is far and away the most important reactivity of the carbonyl group itself. And this manifests itself in the addition of nucleophiles to the carbonyl carbon. So the AD sub N elementary step, the addition of a nucleophile to a polarized pi bond, is far and away the most important elementary step of neutral carbonyl groups. And in fact, the same is true of protonated carbonyl groups. Addition to the carbonyl carbon is an extremely common and extremely important step of this class of molecules. This addition establishes a new bond between the carbonyl carbon and the nucleophile. And because the pi electrons were pushed to oxygen, oxygen ends up negatively charged when we're starting from a neutral carbonyl group. Just to keep the coloring consistent, let's make the new bond red, signifying that the electrons of the new carbon nucleophile bond came from the nucleophile. What we've produced is an alkoxide with a nucleophile, often a heteroatomic nucleophile, linked to the adjacent carbon. Of course, if this is a carbon-based nucleophile, we could simply protonate that oxygen and synthesize an alcohol from the carbonyl compound. This can also be done with nucleophilic hydrogen. In general, though, we think about this alkoxide reacting as either a Bronsted base or a nucleophile and further reactivity. And so, for example, protonation of that could lead to an alcohol or attachment to an electrophile could create an alkoxy group or something along these lines. I'm going to show two examples here of nucleophilic or basic reactivity of the carbonyl oxygen. And specifically, Lewis basic reactivity is going to be our focus here. Don't forget about those proton transfer steps that we looked at previously on the video covering the basicity and acidity of carbonyl compounds. When the carbonyl oxygen acts as a Lewis base, it coordinates to a Lewis acid. And this is often something that can includes a six electron building block. Because the addition of two more electrons to that building block would give it an octet, this coordination through an A sub N, or association of a nucleophile elementary step, tends to be a good thing from the electrophile's perspective. The charge of the carbonyl oxygen has increased by one unit since one of its lone pairs is now involved in a bond to the Lewis acid, and the charge on the Lewis acidic atom, boron in this particular example, decreases by one unit. So here the boron becomes negatively charged. One thing to note about this is that it's highly analogous to the protonation of the carbonyl group with a Bronsted acid. It's just that the Lewis acid in the example we see here is not hydrogen, but boron. A second process that's also highly analogous to the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen involves an SN2 reaction in which the carbonyl oxygen serves as a nucleophile. And very commonly, it takes an extremely strong electrophile to do this, something like a triflate, for example. It takes a very strong electrophile because the oxygen, due to its electronegativity, is not that great of a nucleophile. But if we can get a strong enough electrophile around, displacement of a great leaving group like this leads to, in this case, alkylation of the carbonyl oxygen. And so similar, actually, to the coordination, the A sub N step above, what happens here is the formation of a new, now carbon oxygen bond. Here, carbon was acting as the Lewis acid. But unlike the step above, we've also generated the conjugate base of a leaving group. Here, the triflate anion, OTF minus. And this elementary step is also highly analogous to protonation. It's just that the Lewis acid now is carbon rather than hydrogen. Just as a hypothetical, and to drive this analogy home, think about what would happen if we treated the carbonyl group with, instead of ethyl triflate, as is shown here, triflic acid, HO 
TF. Drawing curved arrows for the reaction that occurs when we treat the carbonyl group with triflic acid will help you see the analogy between these two processes.